Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757 230 with us and welcome to those watching online. We're happy that you decided to join us this morning. I believe that God has something great for all of us here. Uh, I'm looking in anticipation of what he's going to do. Now we did begin a brand new series last week called my, Making My Life Count and I know each and every one of us want our life to count, right? We want to know that we spend this one and only life well uh, and so we want to make sure that we cover the bases. And there's the smartest man that ever lived. The Bible records him as his name is Solomon. And he says this in Ecclesiastes 7, 18. He says, a person who fears God deals responsibly with all of reality, right? Not just a piece of it. And so what Solomon is telling us is in our quest to be able to make our, our lives count, that we need to look at all the main factors that affect us, those factors that make us us, right? Makes you you. And so you need to make sure you're looking at those. Now, those factors we're going to look at today, and I've titled my message for this one, Winning the Hand Dealt You, okay? Winning with the hand that's dealt to you, and uh, we are going to have some fun together, as you can tell with these cards, and everybody's like, what the heck is she doing? <laughs> She's always doing something different, right? Okay, well, I've got a new way I want to show you something. Maybe kind of tweak your mind a little bit to think differently, but we're going to see what the Lord wants here. So bow your heads with me because it's my custom to invite the Holy Spirit, which is God's presence, to move even more. Father God, I thank you that you are in this room, and I'm acquainted, Father, with the fact that you're always here. And so when I say, come Holy Spirit, really what I'm asking is that you would open our eyes that we might see you and our ears that we might hear you more clearly. So Lord, this is your service. This is your message. These are your people. And so I ask, Father, that you would tend to them well, that you would cause them to be attentive to what it is you're saying. I thank you, Lord. This is your time. Move amongst your people. Give them what they need. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, let's have a little confession. How many of you guys play poker? Ooh, come on, honesty, yes. <laughs> little hands are like, <laughs> we're in church. Yeah, I do, right? Hey, listen, today I want to use these five factors that I believe that God um, wants us to speak to us, and I'm going to play a little game with you. Uh, it's called Five Card Stud Poker, okay? Now, I believe it's a metaphor for our life, right? In this, uh, when you play poker, especially this kind, you are dealt five cards, and you don't get to throw them away, exchange them, and things like that. you got to win with the hand that's been dealt to you right? So you got to make the most of it, basically. And uh, when you're dealt in, par in poker, what you're looking at is you're trying to get uh, like a combination, a pair, or, you know, three cards, or, you know, a straight, you know, where they line up. And so if you can get them uh, all of one suit, that's wonderful. And if you get the hearts, right, and you get them all in one suit, starting with the ace down, what happens is for those five cards is that you get a royal flush, right? That's the best that we can do. And so anyway, that concept, I think, uh, helps to play into an analogy I want to share with you this morning, right? I believe that uh, the five-card stud poker 
is a lot like us because we get dealt cards or factors and things in our lives, and we didn't ask for them. We just got them, and we got to play our life with them, right? Like, for example, you didn't choose who your parents are going to be, where you're going to be born, you know, what's going on, what's your ethnicity, if you're in a, a wealthy country or a poor country, and, you know, what your talents are. You didn't ask for any of those. Those are kind of God dealt those to you, but you are responsible to play them out. Now, the Bible, again, has these cards or these factors in our lives, and they make us us. And I want to be able to discuss those with you and show you how you can take ordinary things in your life and God can do extraordinary things, right? But before I get to your cards, I just got to do a quick disclaimer, okay? First of all, every card up here, every aspect of our lives or facets of it, they're all flawed. They all have issues, right? There's nothing perfect because we live on earth. And so there's nothing perfect except for heaven. Okay, that's the first thing you got to keep in mind. Second is that indeed God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come and to save us, right? To redeem us, to pay the penalty for our sins, right? But he came also to be the leader of our life. But that means he came so that he would transform us and renew us. And in that process, that we would begin to understand uh, who we are created to be, that we are children of the God Most High, that he takes our very ordinary lives and does extraordinary things with them. Pastor Andy said something a couple of weeks ago that just has hung on me. And I believe this is the spirit when it hangs this long, because it's been like two weeks now, almost three. He said, people remember that you are um, not earthly beings just having a spiritual experience. You're not earthly beings just having a spiritual experience, but you are a spiritual being just happen to be here on earth. You are a spiritual being. You just happen to be on earth here for a short time. This is like, this should rock your world, <laughs> right? Because it speaks about how we are designed for eternity, Right? And so we need to keep that in tension when we're looking at uh, these factors that uh, make us us. And then lastly, I need to remind the, each and every one of you that you will stand, your time will end, and you will stand before God, and you will give an account for how you played your hand. Right? And so he, when he looks at it, he's not going to ask you, how did you play the hand like your sister or brother, right? Or your mother or father. He's going to ask you, how did the play the hand that he dealt you? Did you do it to the best of your ability? Did you make the most of it? So there's an accountability, and as your pastor, I want to make sure that you're ready for that, that answer, because I plan to be standing there next to God going, yeah, man, right? So I want to make sure you get all, all that you can out of this. Now, the five factors, let's pull out your outline. The first one I'm going to call is my chemistry. It's my chemistry. Here it is, okay? And your chemistry is referring to your DNA, your genes, your chemistry in your bottle, body, right? Your hormones, all those things. It's just your physical makeup, right? It's what I like to say is the, the why behind the what when you look in the mirror <laughs> and it looks back at you, right? It's all these things that God has created inside of us to make us unique, to make us ourselves. So if you're a person that has low energy, right? There's no right or wrong with that. It's just the way you were made, right? If you have low energy, we call that being laid back personality, <laughs> Or you could be somebody that is high energy, not right or wrong, but high energy, where you're like a live wire that's more like me, right? So we know that all of our, uh, our genes and, and our chemistry and our makeup, well, they have weaknesses and deficits in them. That's because of sin marred us. It just is what it is. Like you can look around and see people that have glasses. That's because they have weak eyes, right? And some of us have a propensity to have our backs go out, Again, neither right or wrong, it just is the makeup of our body. And so we need to know that. And then there's some that have a chemical deficiency also, which causes them to be more prone towards anxiety or maybe uh, sadness, things like that. Now, these all exist within a body, right? And we're kind of like dealt this card. You didn't get to choose it. It's, it's how you were designed, right? Now, what I want to do is share a story with you about myself, right, and how these impact me. So I was told when I was uh, a young youth, th because I had a difficult time learning, right, that I went through some tests and I was told that I have a learning disabilities, a dis a, you know, disability. Now, what that means is my mind is wired up differently than the average one. 
so I think different. Now that some of you are going, that's what it is. I knew there was something strange about that girl, right? Well, my, I just I'm wired up differently. Not good or bad, just differently, right? And so with that wiring differently, I've had a learning disability. And so that, for me, especially became problematic in the educational setting, right? I was the proverbial square, you know, square peg that was being jammed in the right, you know, in a round thing. You will fit, you will fit. I'm like, I will not fit, I will not fit, <laughs> right? It was bruising for me and my teachers, I couldn't tell you that, right? And so I struggled and struggled. And when I found out that Jesus Christ was indeed um, my Lord and Savior, right, and I experienced his healing on other areas, I thought, I'm going to be first. Run down. I want that healed. I want my learning disability healed. So I asked the Lord, would you heal me of the disability, right? And he came back with no. He came back with a no. I was like, whoa, wait. Now, this is earlier in my, uh, in my walk with the Lord. I go, what do you mean No. Right? And I heard him very clearly uh, say what he said to the Apostle Paul, no, because in your weakness, my strength will show up best. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay. Right? And here you go. To underline this and what God was saying to me, uh, last month I bought one of those, uh, some distressed jeans, and it came with a little tag, and I thought, this is so apropos for all of us, but especially for me. These jeans have intentional flaws in order to make them unique, right? And I thought, yeah, okay, I got a little tag on the back of me, right? They're intentional flaws. God allows these to happen. Why? Because we're not clones. We're unique. We're individuals. We're, we're designed with something in mind, and so we need to understand that, and we need to be able to embrace that. The psalmist says that you and I, we need to get to a place in uh, 139 so that we can say this to the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex that we begin to understand he's in charge of the chemistry and he dealt it to us, okay? The second thing that determines your identity or who you are is your connections, your connections. Now, your connections, I'm talking about your relationships, right? Your relationship, especially if you're uh, those early relationships early on you know, with the people that were significant in your life. Whether they're good or bad or healthy or unhealthy, they had a huge implication on you, right, and who you are today. I mean, studies show us that your identity is formed in the beginning on what others say you are, those significant people in your life, what they say you are, right? They impact how you see yourself. So we need to know that your connections in life also uh, kind of imprint on you your identity, right? And so we need to keep that in our mind. And if that's true, then I know that my connections help me to know the meaning of life. And my connections, understanding them, and the people, the significant people in my life, help me to understand my purpose, my significance, my purpose, my vision of who I am. It the, works the same with you, right? And that's great if we grew up with, you know, great connections. But when we don't, Right? When we don't and we feel disconnected or we feel that uh, we've been treated poorly by those significant others in our lives, especially as young kids, right? then we struggle with what is our purpose? Who am I? Do I matter? These things all begin to bubble up. Healthy people with healthy connect or the healthy connections, those that have had that, they don't, they don't bother to add, ask, does my life matter? Because those significant people around them told them they did matter. You see that? And so we need to know that connections are very powerful. They're very, very powerful. Now, why? Why are they so powerful? Well, you know, that question was asked of Jesus. In the Bible, there's a story where Jesus is walking down the street, and a guy comes over, and he says, Hey, Jesus, I want to talk to you for a second. What's life all about? He says, What's life all about? And Jesus turns around, and he says, You can summarize life into two statements here. Right? And these are those statements in Mark 12, 30 and 31. It says, To love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And then we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so in there, what he's telling us, what Jesus is saying to us, is that when you and I connect with the Lord God, we connect with each other. Okay? When you and I are in harmony with God, we can be in harmony with other people. Right? And so Jesus is saying to us, make sure you don't miss the most important thing in life is relationships, loving relationships. And he puts his really high premium on it. 
And because of that, the, the uh, connection aspect of who you are is extremely important, and we need to be able to look at it and understand it. All right, the third connection, or the third part that makes you you, that we're going to look at is your circumstances. It's your circumstances, okay? Your circumstances. Now, these are all the things that are happening around you and to you, okay? These are all the things that have happened around you and to you, both good and bad, right? They shape us. They shape who we are. And my guess is that the good are great, but those bad ones, they tend to really take the chisel and chisel us out and shape us even more, I believe, right? And so I say that we could be a product of a lot of our traumas and our heartaches and, you know, our sufferings, right? They tend to shape, take our, our lives and shape them. So if you're a person that has experienced a lot of rejection, yep, if you've experienced a lot of a rejection, that has affected you, the way you see, the way you react, right? Or if you're somebody who has experienced a succession of failures, then that also affects your identity. If you're a person that's gone through a lot of crisis, it changes the way you are, and it puts in their scars and, and different things, right? And especially if you are someone who has endured an abuse, and I'm sorry that that's happened to you, but that fact means that, that you have um, been uh, changed, right? That it has affected you at a, a level, and I don't care if it's physical, mental, or sexual abuse, right? It's affected you greatly, and God wants to redeem that, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But these experiences that we have in our lives, the situations, they really do, do, they do shape us, right? Again, with me and the learning disability, like it was just yesterday, I can remember one of the things that happened to me. I was always, the underline always, always <laughs> in trouble, okay? The principal and I, like this, right? I was always getting it wrong, always missing, you know, missing it, always saying the dumb thing or the wrong thing at the wrong time. Well, I remember an incident in about the sixth grade where uh, the whole school system was going to have this grand spelling bee. And so they were, you know, testing all the kids. And I was, a, I was the top of my class back then, uh, you know, the sixth grade was. And so we were doing this spelling bee rehearsal. And publicly, with 32 students, I had to stand up and I had to spell my words. And I'm telling you, I studied, but because of my dyslexia, I could never keep the pattern correct, <laughs> right? And so I'd inevitably mess it up. And uh, this went on and on and on with the round robin, come back to me. I mean, I just felt like, why do I even need to stand here, right? And the public humiliation was pretty bad. Anyway, we went out to recess that day. Shows you I'm showing my age. They had recess then. My favorite class, recess, right? So I got out there, and then my normal self would have been to gone over to the jungle gym and hanging upside down and all that stuff. Well, this day I didn't. This day I went to the corner because I'd been so beaten up. I was tired, and I was sad. And I can remember, like I said yesterday, like it was yesterday, one of my teachers, the sixth grade teacher, came over, and she put her arm around me, and she looked at me, and she said, oh, she goes, I'm sad for you, right? And she, looked, she goes, listen, don't worry about it. You're pretty, and somebody's going to marry you, and you won't ever have to spell. <laughs> okay. Did that scar me? Yes, it did. Right? I didn't get married until I was 29. Right? Not because there wasn't nice guys. I just couldn't. I had to overcome this. Right? I got a master's degree partly to tell her, damn it, I could do it. Yeah. Right? So you need to know that things that happen, experiences that we happen in our life, situations like that, they scar us. They shape us, right? And we'd be a fool if we didn't realize the implications those have and the impact they have on our lives. But here's the hope that God gives us concerning those circumstances. In Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So God says, I'm going to redeem it. I'm going to redeem it. Now, the fourth card that, factor that makes us, us, or you, you, is your consciousness. It's what I'm calling your consciousness, right? That's the inner voice that's inside you that talks to you. That's the inner voice that talks to you about out of your values and your beliefs and your practices, right? Right now, you've got an inner voice going on. As I'm talking, you go, oh, I so get that, girlfriend right? Or some of you are going, no way, it doesn't work that way. 
And so you're talking. We're talking to ourselves all the time. The inner voice is always talking to us and processing things around us. Now, here's a truth that I know for many of you. You're your own worst enemy, right? You're your biggest critique comes from yourself, comes from the inner voice. And I believe it's because somewhere along the line, you've heard somebody somewhere say, you know, that you're not good enough, that you're lazy, you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, you're not going to amount to anything. And they might have said all that to you, but what happened? You plop, put it in your mind, and you filed it away. And then you pull it out. And here's how it usually sounds. <laughs> it is just like me to make that stupid mistake. I can never do it because I'm just not able to. And so we tend to replay those old records, right, and things that have been said to us. And in reality, we are, uh, we are believing what was said because our consciousness, when it rehearses it and says it enough inside, then our reactions follow right behind it. And yet in Proverbs 4.23, it says, be careful what you think. Self-talk. Put that right out there. Self-talk. Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. It's saying that your, uh, your consciousness is going to affect your identity, affect who you are. So you got to be quick on the draw on that one. Okay? Now, in looking at my hand that's developed here, there's nothing ordinary, right? It's just kind of developing along. These are the cards that have been dealt, right, to me and to you. This card here, though, this one is a game changer. All right? This one controls all of these. This one is choice. Okay? This one is very, very important. Choice. You see, God made us in his image. And why that's important, that God made us in his image, is because it gives us choice. Right? It gives us choice. So uh, what I want you to know is that the Bible says when God created us um, in his image, he didn't create any of the other animals, by the way, like that. Dogs, even though we love them. Right? They're not made in God's image. Neither are our monkeys, cows, and all the other animals we see. We are human beings that are made in his image. And again, the implication of that are lots, but we have free choice. We have free moral choice. Let me define that. Free moral choice. So unlike a dog, a dog can't make that moral choice. It doesn't get in confused with ethics, right? It just instinctually does what it does. Well, humans are different. They've been given choice. And because they've given choice, we can choose to, to choose either right things or wrong things. God has given that to us. And I believe there's freedom in choice. I believe that choice can be our biggest blessing and is our biggest blessing. I also think it's our nemesis. It's the thing that's our Achilles heel because we make choices that stink. Right? We make choices a lot of times that we get hurt and we are unwise and we not only hurt ourselves, but we hurt other people around us. Right? Now, God says that we can go to him when we need to make those choices. And you see that in the scripture in James 1.5. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. And so what we see there is God saying, this choice is important. Come and talk to me about it. Now, I want you to see something here, that this choice card, it controls all the other cards. It can change the number and the suit. It changes everything, right? So we've got to get used to that choice card that's been given to us and how we want to play it. This is what this is about. This is about our choices that we make. You see, you couldn't choose like me what my chemistry was going to be, my DNA, my genes, and all we don't get to choose that, but we get to choose how we deal with it, okay? We don't get to choose what people say to us, but we get to choose whether it's going to stick in our mind and we're going to replay it or we're going to be transformed in our thinking. So you have choice on what you're going to do. And I guess basically what I'm saying is ultimately, ultimately your identity is based on your choices, not on what you've been given, right? It's based on your choices, how you choose to respond to that which you've been dealt Really? Yes, and that's good news. That's good news for us, right? Because I, I believe that when we get to use this choice card, we can change our destiny. We can change what's going on around us and in our lives. Let me show you. On your outline, right, I want to show you five winning choices that you can make. The first one, with your chemistry, you can choose or I can choose to get healthier. I can choose to get healthier. 
So what I mean by that is no matter where you are, no matter what you're facing, right? If you're that person that has a propensity to uh, sadness or anxiety or you're facing a, you know, something that's a disability that's, that's hampering you from doing something, right? It doesn't matter. Wherever you are, if you take stock and trade and where you are right now, you can get healthier. You can move forward in understanding that better than where you're at right now, right? So this is important. When it comes to my learning disability that I've been talking about, I made a choice. I made a choice not to pretend it doesn't exist. There's like, I think the statistics say over 80% of people with learning disabilities end up in jail. I can see why, right? Well, yeah, so when I, when I uh, looked at the diagnosis that was given to me about being a learning disabled individual, I had a choice to run and hide and pretend or to look it squarely in the face. And so that's what I did. And when it started talking about my limitations because of it, I was like, well, wait a minute, I need to look you squarely in the eye and not deny it, but say, okay, that's true, but God, you've called me this way. What do you want me to do with it? And so what we do is we come to a place in our lives where we embrace the weaknesses inside of ourselves and we say, okay, God, you've given me these genes. How do you want me to uniquely play them? Now, I don't minimize the fact with dyslexia that it's tough. I'm going to tell you, one of the attributes of my condition called learning disabilities is that I have dyslexia really bad, so when I'm reading, my words start to move around like this, right? Or they flip, and they do all kinds of crazy stuff. One minute I can read a word, next minute I can't. Now, that's frustrating, right? But I've learned to overcome some of this. How? If you come into my classroom and I'm teaching you, right, and we're going through a workbook or something, a lot of times I'll ask some of my students here to just read them for me, right? I'll say, read this for me. And that kind of helps me when I get off track, but it also pulls them in unbeknownst to me, right? And then I have learned the beauty. And such a, this one just in, knocks me for a loop. One of the ways I overcome is I have decided a long time ago, to hide God's word in my heart. And I've hid it in there. Why? Because sometimes I can't read it. And when I hide it in my heart, I always have it. And I'm going to tell you, that has made me one of the most powerful people I know. Because I hid it in my heart. God can take it out at any time and play it anywhere. Do you see that? And so hiding his word in my heart has, has actually helped me out tremendously. So that which was a disability becomes an ability in my life. Do you see that? So I played this wild card, right? Because the wild card helps us to understand when we have limitations in life. Psalm 119.73, I love this. It says, you made my body, Lord. Now give me sense. <laughs> I love that. Now give me sense to heed your laws. In other words, wake up and figure out what God wants to do with this, right? What does he want to do with this? Now I'm going to tell you the secret sauce. Okay, don't miss this. The secret sauce in being able to play the wild card in your life is the Holy Spirit, right? That's God indwelling in us. It's the Holy Spirit. That's the secret sauce. And when we take our choice card and we give it to the Holy Spirit, he takes it, and where our chemical issues are, right, our chemistry, he changes it. He changes our reality. He changes our our destiny. He begins to change the suit and the number. He begins to set us up for something that's greater than we could ever hope, dream, or imagine because we've used this card. And the next thing I want you to see is this whole uh, choice of the connections, right? Is that we choose to deepen our relationship with one another, that that becomes important, that we take responsibility. We begin to agree with God that relationships are important. So we begin to, uh, to learn how to communicate better, right? And to, and to make sure we go that extra mile so that we are connecting with people. And if you grew up in a home where there wasn't that connection and you were uh, disconnected and it's hard for you, well, I'm sorry that happened to you, but take ownership of that. You didn't cause that. That was one of the cards dealt, but you can do something about it right? You can begin to realize that that disconnection and those hurts, they permeate every relationship that you have in here, right? They permeate your relationships, and you have to begin to understand the weight of that. And then that helps you to, to begin to find solutions. Perhaps counseling is one of them. You see, relationships are very, very important. And here's something else I know. 
with relationships in regard to being wounded, that when you go to Scripture, you know the very first thing God says to do for people that have trans- trespassed against us, that have wounded us? It says to forgive them, right? No! <laughs> yeah, it says to forgive them, Right? And so we forgive because in that statement, when we say, I forgive you for this, right? We don't have to say it to the person even, but we can say to God, God, I don't hold on. I forgive. Why? Because that demonstrates the fact that we realize that God forgave us many, many sins. And because he has forgiven us, we're going to offer freely to everybody the forgiveness that we have received from God ourselves. Do you see that? That's huge. That's huge. And so we are able to, to walk in this forgiveness. Now, there's something, if I do a reality check for me, and maybe you're like this, that I will forgive, and then I'm confronted with a person, and I go, it's back. I thought I forgave them, right? I'm being real, okay? So there's something called a posture of forgiveness. In other words, I'm going to offer it freely, but I realize this girl is flawed, And so this is where coming and being part of a community of faith, being part of a small group, this is where that really kicks in because they're going to help you. They're going to walk with you as you are walking out this forgiveness. And I can tell you, if you continue to walk down this path of forgiveness and you're honest before God and you're uh, in your small group and they're helping you to walk, it says that even your enemies will lie down and be at peace with you. Why? Because you've begun to love them. Why? Because we begin to pray for them, right? And so all of a sudden... We find this freedom in our relationships because we've groomed them. And this is the prayer that Apostle Paul has for us, and I have for each one of you. It's Ephesians 3, 17. I pray that Christ will live in your hearts by faith and that your life will be, look at this, strong in love, circle that, strong in love and be built on love, circle built on love. You see, when you choose to allow the Holy Spirit, right, to come inside. You choose to partner up with the Holy Spirit in your relationship. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. So in the relationship card, when we do this, our destiny again changes from ordinary to extraordinary. And we can begin to see a pattern of our destiny being radically altered for Jesus Christ. Now, the next one I want to talk to you about is is in circumstances, we can choose to trust God no matter what's happening. You can choose to trust God no matter what's happening, right? It's as the psalmist says in 34.1, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. We're going to praise him. We're going to understand that. So in my story about having a learning disability, I told you about all the pressures, and it really did damage It did damage me in so many ways because I was that square, right, being jammed all the day long, 24-7, into a a round circle. And in my time, they didn't really understand what learning disabilities was all about. You were just the dumb kid or you were the defiant kid. And so those are the the way that I was responded to. And so for me, there was a lot of, of wounding that took place with that as I was growing up. Now, here's the good part, though. When I went to the Lord and asked him to heal me, right, and he said no, that was the best thing, the greatest thing ever happened to me. But when I went to him and I said, God, I want you to heal me of this learning disability, right, and he said no, I had one of two choices. I could decide to be angry and will have to know the why or not. And I I tell you, I had that moment when that happened and I got that no, right, and I started to think about it and I thought, Lord, you, I know you love me. I know you love me because you gave me your only begotten son that while I was still a sinner far from you, that you gave your son to die for me, for sharing me on the cross, for all the wrong that I did, because you love me so much that you got on that cross and that you died for me, Jesus. And I know I'm important to you. And you did that so that I could be part of your family. So I know you got my best intentions at heart. I know that, God. And if you say no, well, then I'm going to have to trust you on that. And every time that I came squarely in face of the difficulties that I had, I would often say, I choose you, God, and I choose your way right? I choose to follow you even if I don't understand the circumstances that are happening right now around me. 
Even though I don't understand, I'm going to trust you. And when we take that circumstance, when we give our circumstances to the Lord and we ask the Holy Spirit to come in because of our choice, what he does is he takes our circumstance, or, what is it? circumstances yep, and he changes them, right? And our destiny is altered. And beginning to see a pattern, are you beginning to see a pattern of what he's doing? He's taking an ordinary life and he's starting to do something extraordinary, right? This leads me to the biggest one, which is number four, right? This is a big one. We can choose what I think about, what we think about. In other words, our consciousness. We can choose what we think about. We can't choose what people have said to us and things that they've done to us, right, in our minds and those records, but we can choose to whether we keep them in our mind or not. Romans 12, 2 says, uh, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. Circle that word, transform. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, right? And so he's going after here, Apostle Paul's going after the way we think. He's targeting it. He's saying, I need you to change the way you're thinking because the way you're thinking is not the way God wants you to think. And I can say that true with everybody in here, including myself. And so this is why it's also very, very important for you and I to make sure that we have this time, that we set aside, that we become a disciplined people, that we would read his word, right? That we read his word, because how else can you be transformed? At least you know what he says, you know what he feels, what he thinks. He's given us a whole book that lets us know about it, right? And so you and me, of all people, who doesn't like to read because of my learning disability? Every morning of my life, I get up. I get up, and after my coffee, I sit down, I start to read the Word of God, right? I push forward to read it so that I can understand it. I take my journal, and I write it out, what I see God doing. I invite the Holy Spirit in. Because the heart is evil, it lies to itself, and how else can I know truth unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to me? So the Word becomes an, interna- an interaction, in hopes that my mind might be transformed. And that's what we're looking for here, that we take our our consciousness the way we talk to ourselves and we begin to lay it at the foot of the cross and we ask the Holy Spirit to empower us to think differently, to think differently. And so when we use this power that God has given us, boy, our destiny is really starting to change. And we begin to realize that there is a pattern to what God is doing in our lives. We begin to understand that the Holy Spirit is the the change agent here also. And so on this fifth card, which is our wild card that changes everything, it's our choice. And the number one choice that you and I can make is we can choose to ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior. We can choose to ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior. Now Jesus, I've said often, has come to take care of the sin problem that we have, that each and every one of us has, right? Right? For each and every one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. And so when we confess that shortness before God, he comes and he infills us up. He forgives us. He gives us his gift of salvation. But listen to this. He does so much more than that. He gives us the Holy Spirit that helps us to begin to be transformed. We begin to be renewed. And many people I talk to, they look at the cards that have been laid out and they go, but I just don't have what it takes, Sharon, to be able to change my chemistry. I, I just those, those wounds that came from my parents, I just can't get over, Sharon. This situation of abuse, Sharon, it's just totally obliviated me, right? I can't, I can't break those old records in my head. And I say, yes, you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, you can because he has given you the Holy Spirit. You need to go through the process, though, and we go through this process over and over as he refines us. Jesus needs to be the leader of your life, the CEO. When you go into a meeting, you stop. You ask yourself, God, what do you want for me today? And if you're in the middle of a a discussion and it's gone north on you or south on you, you stop. Just stop right there. You don't have to win the argument. You stop and say, Jesus, what is it you want here, right? Right? And so you invite the Holy Spirit into everything that you do. This is the secret sauce. This makes all the difference. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person on the inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so here we go. Here's the challenge. 
If you've accepted Jesus Christ, if you prayed that prayer, if you haven't, I'm going to give you a, a moment. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. You need to. That's where we start. But if you've prayed that prayer and you feel that you, you can't see these cards switching and you're having a hard time invoking the Holy Spirit, right? Well, I believe, and the Lord put this on my heart this morning, that's because he's not, Jesus isn't leading your life. There's a disconnect. It's a disconnect. And so he wants to reconnect with you to help you because, see, he has in mind not an, an, an ordinary life, but he has an extraordinary life, and he is challenging you. How will you spend your choices? And if you invoke the Holy Spirit, you learn who the Holy Spirit is. You learn to use him in your life. He changes everything, my friends. He changes everything. He gives you a royal flesh. It's a heart change. And he begins to do more than you could ever hope, dream, or imagine. Because the destiny he has for you is so much more than what you presently are looking at. And today is all about giving you hope in Christ Jesus, that he can take your circumstances, no matter what they are, and he can make them uh, turn into an extraordinary hand that you can play. And when you stand before the Father God, he will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servants. Come on in, let that party begin, right? Bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you for your love, and I thank you for your mercy today. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would continue to work in our hearts, Cause us, Father, to take this simple little exercise with cards and to be able to see that you have created inside of us to be a royal flesh, to be a king's kid, to be the, the head and not the tail. I thank you, Father, you delight in using weaknesses. And you've taught me so long ago that when I use my weakness, that your strength shows up. And so I glory all the more in the weaknesses I have. And I ask, Father, that that perspective could be those, Father, that heard what your word was saying today, that it is you that desires to work in their lives. I hear. And so Father's calling to some of you to come home. He's calling to you. I can sense that in my, my spirit as I'm even talking now. And so I don't want to delay. So if you're here and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Or if you are in a pathway and you can't see how these cards are flipping for you, that you just wonder why, well, that's that alignment with letting Jesus be the leader. And so I'm going to lead you in a prayer right where you're at because it's between you and the Heavenly Father what's going on here. So you just repeat after me right where you're at. Say, Father God, I acknowledge you're poking at me. And so the best I understand... I ask you to be my Savior, Jesus, and to forgive me for my sins. And Jesus, be the leader of my life. I don't understand how, but I need you to be the leader. Now, Father, for those praying that prayer, I ask that you just seal it. Do you seal it in their heart? And you say to me, Father, you've written their name in the book of life. And Father says, not even you, you can't even remove your name. No, no eraser will erase it. And so, Father, I ask that you would empower people today, that you would cause them, Lord, to see that you are doing this beautiful thing in their life if they will yield to your Holy Spirit, if they will walk with you, if they will allow you to lead, Lord, that you want to write upon them hope, hope for, hope for a destiny, a destiny where they will be able to see in the obituary of their life that they served this generation well and represented you in all things, and now they rest with you. Father, I thank you. I thank you again for your mercy and your touching. And so we invite you to continue all week long to show us the truth. And yes, Father, we will learn to love you with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, with every breath of life that you've given us, we will align ourselves with what your word says. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you say so, and that's why. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. 
You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.